Good afternoon, this is Mike Alt. I'm the Oracle Guru for Texas Memory Systems. What I'd like to talk to you today about is write acceleration for Oracle. One little thing I'd like to talk about first is we provide the StatsPackAnalyzer.com website. You can upload your text-based AWR or StatsPack reports and we will analyze them based on the best practice type analysis and give you a report. So new from Texas Memory Systems is our Write Accelerator. The Write Accelerator is designed to speed up your Oracle writes. So when would you want to use this type of Write Acceleration within Oracle? Well, your standard data writes are not really a major concern because Oracle practices what's called delayed block cleanout. Delayed block cleanout is where Oracle will not write a block until it absolutely has to. These are considered a lazy write type operation. The lazy write means that only when Oracle scans the dirty blocks within the buffer area and cannot find a clean one will it try to write. And every three seconds it will try and do these scans and do the writes. Some writes have to be fast. So redo writes, temporary writes, and undo writes have to occur very quickly because other writes and other actions will depend upon these completing. So let's talk about redo writes first. Transactions are getting larger. Databases are getting huge. Redo logs have to keep pace. So therefore, you get many commits will mean many redo log writes, and these writes have to complete very quickly. Things wait on these redo log writes to complete before they can go on. So they are a component in many other waits within the system. Log file waits, as shown by, for example, the log sync waits, uh, can indicate stress on your log system. If they show up in the top five report, you definitely have redo log write stress. However, they may be due to other things such as CPU stress. They may be having to queue up behind other processes. If you see that this is the fact, then you can try, in, for example, the Linux system or the Unix system, re-nicing the log writer process. Re-nicing sets the priority higher so that it can get more CPU to finish its job. Since other things have to wait on the log writer process, it just makes sense to do this. Also, uh, the redo write time and log parallel writes are a better indicator of actual write stress. So by comparing the actual total write time against the log file parallel writes, you can get a number for the write time per write. In our example here, we can see that our log file sync weight of 21,470,000 taking 125,000 seconds. This gives us 34% uh, of our elapsed time is being taken up with log file sync writes. So when our log file type writes show up as one of our major writes, it definitely indicates redo log stress. Also, when we look at our background weights, we can see that log file parallel write, log file sequential read, and log file wait for redo copy are all occurring a majority of our wait time. As a matter of fact, we're seeing an average wait of four milliseconds for our log file parallel write. In this case, we're definitely interested in accelerating that write, reducing that latency. So the number of redo writes is 11,649,440. The total redo write time is 12,418 seconds. That yields really about one millisecond per write of actual write time. The rest is waiting on other things in our system. However, since we can reduce our latency to 0 0.015 milliseconds by use of a write accelerator type technology, it makes sense that since a good portion of our wait time is being taken up with our redo write operations, that we can move our redo logs to this type of technology. Some other questions you may ask of your system people are the run queue numbers for the time period in question showing that the database is experiencing not only CPU but write stress. Are the redo logs on separate devices? Are, in other words, have they been moved to optimize their write profile on whatever system you're using right now? Has the log writer process been re-niced? Has it, the priority been boosted so that it gets a majority of the CPU since other processes will wait for it? And if the run queue is small, redo logs are properly located, and log writer has priority, 
then latency is your issue. And at that point, the TMS Ride Accelerator should move to the starting line for your solution. An example here, we have our before and after. And we can see that our log file switch checkpoint, our log file switch completion, our log file sync weights are part of our major wait time with a wait time of 17 milliseconds, 55 milliseconds, 13 milliseconds. This, and our background wait events, log file parallel write at 18 milliseconds. Now when we switch this over to the RAMSAN technology, we can see that for one, our writes now move down the list. They're no longer our main wait event. So our log file parallel right now is taking zero milliseconds average wait time. That's a considerable difference from 13 to 14 milliseconds. And our log file parallel writes and others are taking much less time. So for the disk-based system, the write time to complete a redo write was 757,698 centiseconds divided by 405,691 writes for a value of 18.7 milliseconds per write. Okay? The time per redo write with a TMS write accelerator was 55,447 centiseconds for 5,313,254 writes, or a write time of 0 0.104 milliseconds per write. Sped up our writes by a factor of 179 times. All right, let's move on to temporary table space writes. Now, Temporary table space writes are kind of an interesting animal in that there are several type of writes that will generate them. You have sorts, hash joins, global temporary tables, and bitmap index merge type operations that will all generate temporary writes. However, a lot of these writes are what I call stealth writes because there is no direct tracking of them. Only sorts are really tracked well. We have all sorts of statistics to map those sorts but hash joins will usually only show up in the SQL plan table or in the sort usage table. Bitmap only in the SQL plan table and global temporary writes is global temporary table space activity. Your major indication is that you have a large amount of I.O. in your temporary table space but zero disk sorts. So here's uh, an example where we have an extreme amount of read activity and write activity into our temporary table space. And as you can see, our average read milliseconds is 24.6. So this is definitely slowing down whatever operations are using all this temporary table space. So if we wanted to see what the actual physical read and write time were, we actually have to go into the underlying tables with scripts and pull that information out. Now you can see we have all of our temporary table space data files broken out here. While over here we have our read times of 15 down to fractional for the minor use table spaces. And our write times go up to 10 to 17 milliseconds. So by looking at that type of speed, we're talking that the temp is definitely showing stress. Now this is an actual AWR from a 24, 72 gigabyte disk farm using 10K hard drives. So when we look at this, we can see that our temp reads for a temp heavy activity, uh, we're taking around 2.1 milliseconds. Our writes are shown here at 77,000. Unfortunately, AWR doesn't give you write times because generally they're not a concern with the exception of, again, redos and undo and temp. So when we look at our actual file names using our I.O. timing analysis script as we did before, we can see that our write times are about three times to seven times what our read times were. So again, this is showing stress in the environment. Now, using the same exact transaction on the TMS write accelerator with the temporary table space placed there, we can see that we got not only more reads and writes, that our average read milliseconds was 0.1 milliseconds rather than what we saw before. And when we do the detail analysis, we can see that our average read time was 0.08 and 0.09, with our average write of 1.75 milliseconds and 1.7. So a dramatic improvement, a seven times improvement. Let's talk about undo writes for the last section of this presentation. Undo, like redo, is generated with every transaction. So, undo must complete before the transaction is complete. 
Otherwise, of course, uh, you're going to either have to roll back or have certain errors that occur. Undo writes can slow a transaction considerably. We'll see an example of that in a moment. So it's hard to measure the effects unless you know how many commits or rollbacks are in your transaction and know where to look for the exact statistics. So an AWR from a disk-based system shows that our executes were 3,907, our rollbacks were 4 per second, and our transactions were 4 per second. So we're getting a rollback for every transaction. So this probably is not a normal system. In fact, in this system I was deliberately indicating a rollback for each transaction so we could generate some activity. The system doesn't look stressed when we look at it this way. Our load averages are very small. Our user percent is 32, our system percent is 20, so we're only running about 50% of the CPU. And our weight I.O. doesn't look that bad, 3.4%. And we're 46% idle on our CPUs. So it doesn't look like it's stressed. But why is it taking so long to do my work then? Let's take a look here. Okay, our log file switch completion. Look at our weight out there, milliseconds, 102 milliseconds. It's taking seven for a log file sequential read. It's taking uh, many time factors here. So when we look out here, when we look at our undo table space, we can see that we've got a large number of physical writes. And the average read time is taking 28 milliseconds. So your undo table space is eating your I.O. time, causing significant I.O. weights, average read times, and what have you, forcing the other data files to wait while it completes its operation. So when we get again our detailed I.O. analysis, we can see that our average read times are incredibly high, especially when we look at our data table spaces, almost two seconds to three seconds to read out of these, which is just an incredible amount of waiting time, and it's all generated by the undo problem. So let's remove that undo part of the transaction. So now instead of just rolling back on each of these transactions, I'm letting them complete. Now we can see that the average read times have dropped and we've lost those huge loads against the data table spaces. But they're still not very good numbers. We're still stressing the system. So let's get some uh, high octane acceleration here and see what happens when we move the undo table spaces onto our TMS write accelerator. So here we can see we've got our writes, we've got our, our reads and our writes, but notice our timing here, zero milliseconds to read. That's because it can only read to 0.1 milliseconds. So anything less than 0.05, it's not seeing. So when we get our detailed information, we can see we got 0.021 for read time. That's why it was showing us zero on the AWR report. 0.06 for write times. It completely eliminated our stress. So now, even though our write times are higher on our data, they're not defeating us. They're not destroying our performance. So in summary, write times as well as read times can hurt Oracle. Data writes usually aren't a source of pain because of the delayed block cleanout mechanism. However, undo, redo, and temporary writes can be a considerable source of problems within the Oracle environment. So moving your redo, temporary, and undo to the TMS write accelerator will give you high octane performance.